And welcome back, everybody, to The Brody File. All right, now the progressive view on same-sex marriage. We want you to check out a snippet of this commercial put out by one of those progressive Christian groups. For once, I can say this is mine. You can't take it. As long as I know I have love, I can make it. For once in my life, I have someone who needs me. Welcome, everyone. Conservative evangelicals are probably breaking out in hives over that ad. Well, let me introduce you now to Pastor Joseph Tolton of Rivers of Rehoboth Church in New York City. He supports gay marriage, and he recently made the trek down from the Big Apple to the big Brody File Studios. When President Obama made that historic, some will say, many people will say, statement about same-sex marriage, what was the reaction uh, within more of that progressive, if you will, side uh, of the church when it, when it came to what the president said? And, and how is that being received? Because there's been a lot of talk out there about there's a lot of folks within the African-American community that are not comfortable uh, with what the president uh, had to say on this issue specifically. Absolutely. The effect that it has had in the African-American community has just been something to see and to behold. On a po in a positive way? Uh, across the spectrum. From a positive yeah. perspective, it has really unleashed a fire within progressive African-Americans who have been very silent. Mainline African-Americans, more liberal African-Americans who are Baptist or even evangelical. Mm -hmm. They now feel emboldened to stand up and to actually claim their particular perspective around the issues of human sexuality and particularly marriage equality. And so I think that that's a great blessing and you've seen a progressive base begin to establish. I have started a campaign with the, under the Fellowship of Affirming Ministries called NoWedge2012.com right. where we have over 100 African American clergy people who have signed on to a statement saying we have more in common than divides us. Now, at the same time you see people like Jay-Z and other folks from popular culture who we are very surprised to come out in favor of marriage equality, they have done so. I think the president's statement has pushed them along. The NAACP has come out and its board has taken a vote. So I think what he has done is he has essentially given cover to folks who were closeted around their more progressive views and now they're out of the closet. And our community is having a very important conversation which is not just vital to the life of LGBT African Americans but vital to the life of black people in America. Talk to me about the future here because I asked Tony uh, Perkins and Bishop Jackson the same thing. Where, where is this going exactly, uh, especially as it relates to the faith uh, community because we see the polling and the polling suggests that indeed more people are feeling more comfortable mm -hmm. with same-sex marriage. That is a real threat to conservative evangelicals in this country. What's your message to them? There's a far bigger threat. Diana Butler Bass has done amazing research which speaks to the fact that millennials are extremely discontented with Christianity as they understand it. Mm. And they are not going to embrace uh, strident and didactic philosophies which are built on a premise of exclusion. So instead of worrying about where uh, marriage equality is going, I think that the church more broadly speaking has got to take a look at this tremendous disconnect that your traditional Christianity has with millennials. If we don't reach young millennials and connect with their essence and hunger mm -hmm. for real spirituality and not religion, we will lose that generation. So I'm very excited mm. that because of my particular experience and having to really wrestle with the scriptures and wrestle with my faith and come to a place of really freeing myself from dogma to be able to embrace a loving God and, and, and a loving and nurturing spirituality. I'm very excited that progressive people of faith, I think, have a wonderful answer for the yearning that we see among millennials. You mentioned a loving God, and boy, is he sure loving and full of grace, that's for sure. And there's another part of God that obviously there's judgment uh, in terms of judgment and sin. And well, yes. where, do, where do you see God in terms of that, the judgment and the sin for, if not homosexuality, what then exactly? Murder? I mean, where, where is the list exactly? How does it morph in, in, into, into how you see the Bible? We either act out of love or we act out of fear. Mm -hmm. And when we act out of fear, we act from a place that does not reflect the love of God. And mm -hmm. so what sin is, it is the absence of love. 
Sin is a zone where God does not exist. The Bible says that righteousness exalts a people, but sin is a reproach to any nation. I absolutely believe that when our behaviors come from a place of fear and we enter a zone where there is no love, that God is not in that place, but God extends God's mercy and God's grace that we might move from that place of fear to a place of love. That's Pastor Tolton here on The Brody File. We're back in a moment with a few final comments.